Okay. Okay. Well, this. Uh, Nice to be here with you. It's great and to be here I've, with you. I've been listening to you and watching you. You've been doing a fantastic job, you know, uh, at the city council sessions. And you're a people-oriented person, and that's what's really important. As I've often said, you know, you work very hard in the fall for your Republican team. And then once you're elected, you're a legislator, and you forget yes. that you're a Republican. Yeah. You're working for the people in their community. Yeah. And I think you're that kind of a person, and that's what we really need in the city of Schenectady. Well, that's that's good to hear, Frank, because, I mean, I've been going to meetings for a long time. As a matter of fact, you were mayor when I was going to council meetings, when I first started going to council meetings. Uh -huh. And one thing I always said about you, and I'll continue to say about you, you were a real people person. You know, and, and Schenectady, really, you know, Schenectady's, Blue collar. I always call it a blue collar town, right. a ham and egg town, and we're ham and eggers. You know, that's right. the way I look at it. That's what we are. Right. But if you wanted to call, if you wanted to talk to the mayor, if you called on a Saturday morning, you answered the phone. Yeah, Many it. times I called on a Saturday morning if there were some neighborhood issues, there. and you answered the telephone. Right. Yep. And it, I got to talk to you personally, and you took care of the problems right. when there was problems. So that's that's what we need more of. Right. Things seem to got a little too sophisticated, I think, through the years. I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, I tell you, <clears throat> being people oriented, uh, I have loved every single minute of it because the people have inspired me, inspired me on a day to day basis, yeah. you know, to promote the issues that would benefit them and their community. And, you know, over the years, sad to say, uh, there, for 30 years now, 31 years, you know, and I know when I was in there, I had to work with a democratic organization. But, the sad part of it is that you got to forget that you're a Democrat or Republican. If they would have done that, a lot of things that have happened in a city would not have hurt the people in our community. I mean, you take the parking garage. I mean, we had DeBartolo, if you remember yes, him. I don't. He wanted to take and put up a parking garage on his own right. and put up a mall right. behind Proctor's, right. and they turned them down. Right, and that was private funds. And that was private back. funds. Yeah. Today, the people are still playing, paying into the millions for a parking garage, yeah. and every single parking garage throughout the United States does not that's that's uh, operated by this uh, city yes. is not functioning in the benefit of the city. I They're remember, I them. remember how adamant you were about that, yeah. but unfortunately, the city council wouldn't go along, with, wouldn't you go along with you on that issue. So you were stuck. That's why we need to forget party lines. It's true, and that's what this alliance party that I also are, uh, yeah. have the endorsement of. <coughs> that's what that's all about. Right. We have a Democrat, we have a Republican, we right. have three independents right. on that. Forget the party lines. We have to do what's best for Schenectady. And, and like you say about the parking, we're still paying. We're still paying that off. After all these, you're yeah. still paying it off. And that's what we're going to be doing with that new garage on Foster Avenue right. too. Oh. That, that's another multi, multi million dollars. Yeah. My grandchildren's grandchildren may still be paying for that. So it, it's sad. Well, I can show you letters that I sent to the mayor and the city council, saying that look, you have to have a series of public hearings before you take and construct a garage on a corner of Foster Avenue and Seneca Street. And I says, because we need to talk about having a city county garage, maybe out in the outlying areas where it would be less For costly. consolidation too, yes. They never responded to my letters and I still got the copies. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, that's and, very sad. And now the parking garage, they turned it over to Metroplex. Metroplex is the city. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's no, the I city. Know. I know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Well, it's people have to listen. You know, that that's it. You know, when, when you're to elected office, you're not just there on your own. Yeah. You're representing everybody that's, right. that's in your municipality. Exactly and, and, right. and unfortunately, I think what happens right. is elected officials lose sight of that, who they're right. really representing. They're representing special interest groups, right. it seems like, Frank. That's right. what I see. Special interest groups, and not the only special interest group that you are interested in, I'm interested in, is the people that live, the residents of Schenectady. That's exactly. a special interest group. Exactly not right. a specific union or no. anything like that. No. You know, we have right. to do what's best for the city. Yeah. And I'm right on the same page with you all the way yeah. with this stuff. You and know? we need a change. Now you talk about changes when you're in control for some 30 years and, and things have gone deteriorated in every neighborhood, every single neighborhood, tax-wise and, 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 and the looks of, every, of the city throughout yep. the city, we need a change because yes. what's happened has cost all these problems. Yes, it has. Yes, problems. it has. Well, one of my big, big platform yeah. issues, Frank, is 
I want to see zero tolerance for these supposedly low quality of life issues where people are just throwing bags of litter out the window of their car. They're tagging, right. graffitiing up buildings, right. dogs running loose. Right. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on with these issues. And, and we have a mentality now in the city that these things are okay. Right. You know, you and I both remember Schenectady, what a great city, what a beautiful city. The neighborhoods were the best part of the city, all the neighbor, all the neighbors, and they all had their different cultural aspects, the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And now it's changed, and we have it to bring is. that back. That's exactly right. Yeah. And the only way that can happen is for the people to get out there in November, Election Day, and make that change, because it's going to be in the best interest of every single family, every single individual. And when you're talking about uh, a city like Schenectady has got low and middle income people mm -hmm. and every single neighborhood is deteriorated, mm -hmm. the city itself is deteriorated, taxes have still gone up and we can't afford to have that kind of an administration in power. Right. I, I agree with you 100%. You're a real good mayor and I'm proud to have known you and I'm proud to, to know you that you've been around this long. It's really well, a terrific thing. And God bless you, uh, uh, Councilman Ricky. I'm looking forward to seeing you in office. Thank you, Mayor.